Howdy, uh, my name is Oatmeal Lent, and welcome back to Let's Play EU4 as Japan. I'm trying to play Japan as a colonial power who, in the early game, was colonizing the Philippines and Asian uh, provinces in the south. Mid-game is trying to take over most of North America, not for money, the money is coming from Asia. North America is for troop strength. I've been using a strategy of conquering the large group, whoever the large group was, in this case the Cree, in this case the Aztecs, and releasing their conquered nations as vassals to keep my um, overextension low. Unfortunately, overextension is still quite low. I mean, still quite high. And as far as late game goes, I expect to use all the troop strength that I gain from... North America in combination with the idea group that would allow me to have causes Bella against all of the underdeveloped Asian nations as long as I westernize, which I plan to do soon by... This is a core of Spain. They have cored this, so if I am to core a province adjacent to it here, then... Or even here... If, I, if I'm to do that, then I can... Um, sorry. Then I can westernize and be able to have that cause as ballet against all the Asian nations. I was just thinking, I should probably stop improving relations with this, get fleet basing rights from Spain, improve relations with Spain. Do I have an advisor that increases my improved relations speed? Better relations over time. So this only works, it doesn't work for vassals, for the Diplo annexation. It only works with foreign powers. So if you read it carefully, it says... It doesn't say in this screen. But it does only work for foreign powers. So I'm going to send my diplomat to Spain to improve relations. Now, they probably dislike me because we're different religions, but they dislike heretics more than they dislike me. Oh. Just randomly lose me a stability. Well. Yeah, we have oppressed a lot of the natives. Guess we kind of deserve that. That is unfortunate because that creates this situation here where... I really feel compelled to... But this is only the colonies. Interesting, the, the Japanese, like, Japanese homeland provinces aren't included in this. I wonder why that is. There must be something... Here, I'm gonna go check. There must be something about these provinces and their revolt risk that is different than these provinces. Oh no, they also have their revolt risk. The list just must only go so deep. Well, if that's the case, it's unfortunate. But I'm going to actually allow that revolt risk to s sit there because I'm almost done coring some of these provinces. And I really want to be able to core DeMarc down here. And that's going to cost 116. And I won't be able to do that if I spend on stability, so. Oh no! This just became a province that just increased my overextension by quite a bit because the base is so high. Oh no, I gotta stop having colonies over here. Uh, just temporarily, but I, I, I do. I do need to stop. Some countries are apparently so appalled by our foreign policy they've decided to retaliate by assassinating our merchants. What makes it even sh more shocking is it happens even at our own trade nodes. Well, it would have been a bigger setback if they'd like killed off my merchant, but they just took him away from his job for eight days. Huh. What a strange event. It really doesn't... I'm glad Ming is weak at this point. Gee, if Ming were strong, they could really mess with me. 
they didn't really hurt me. That 16 days I wasn't collecting trade income, that's it. That really doesn't feel like that bad of a punishment. Oh, wow, I, I knew it. Well, I didn't know it, but I suspected that I would be able to see their capitals. Because when I was Portugal and somehow managed to run into the Japanese, I was able to see Tokyo. Yeah, diplom diplom see this guy, normally you increase one per month. Well here, if you, if you watch, we saw this in a different video, but if you watch, I'm going to increase three per month. Or I guess two per month. Yeah, we got the trading in Chinaware. Awesome. Something must have happened to the Ming that they're not trading very much in Chinaware. That'll increase our legitimacy per year. Um, that was something that I wanted to get by taking over Korea, but then if you remember, uh, it's the biggest mistake that I've made so far this Let's Play, I, in my opinion, is attacking Korea and then just not, just not doing anything. Like, immediately giving Korea back and being like, backpedaling and being like, okay, no Ming, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If I... If I was gonna attack them, I might as well have held it. <laughs> but... I didn't, so... What you gonna do? I just, uh, kinda chickened out. <laughs> I guess it may maybe ended up being worth it to give it back, because they never- Ming never ended up attacking me. Maybe that's the reason. Okay, so... This is a good event for a young guy, because it doesn't actually mean that I'm sick. Sickness of the Shogun, I've fallen ill and cannot handle the ruling of Japan. Who, how shall we handle this? At first I thought this meant that I was ill, and that I was likely to die soon. And... It doesn't seem to impact my likelihood to die at all. So, the way I make this decision is how much money comes from production and how much money comes from trade. Lots more comes from production, that's just been the case um, for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the production efficiency. Yeah, I think that's how that works. Oh my. I accidentally somehow managed to open up the, the French page. But check this out. There is a gigantic coalition against France. I'm glad. I want the Spanish and the French to be at each other's throats. If they're, if they're worried about... I think, would these guys give me fleet basing rights yet? No, they, they won't give me fleet basing rights. Well, that's fine for now. I, I... I'm gonna... Whoa, seven base tax in Havana. That is a serious colony. But, like I was seeing before, it doesn't seem to make as big of a difference for these colonies. It's much more impactful if they're in the same ocean zone as you. Oh, it's it's happened. I've had a I've had a mainland homeland revolt. First ever. Hmm. This widespread opposition thing is bad because now the revolt risk in my home territories is two point four. Boy, I really need some of that overextension to go away. I don't know if I'll be able to win this battle. We'll see. Looks like no. Um, best option is probably some mercenaries. So let's... I have flush in money, so... I'm gonna go ahead and buy a bunch of mercenaries and make sure that I have enough to take on any of the revolts that might happen here in Japan until I can afford to increase the stability. I'd I'd kinda love it if I didn't if I hadn't have check checked this mission. I thought I was gonna be able to accomplish it soon. But it it's ending up to take forever because of the courting process. I if I if I had if I had mission open, I, I'd probably be able to take a, a mission to stop these rebel, rebels and get to stability. The more and more I learn, the more and more I realize you don't take a mission. Do not take a mission ahead of time. Just don't. It's not worth it. 
Gee, can this get any worse? I'm getting even more... Ah, I never thought, I never thought that I'd have an overextension problem such that these colonies would be a big liability to me. I just didn't think about it at all. My bad. Okay, well, I have to send... these boats overseas. So let's go ahead and pick up... Let's go ahead and pick up a... Will he make it? Well, we'll find out. Let's go ahead and pick up an admiral or an explorer. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Wow. It's too far. Wake is too far. From here. Because I never cored here because... Spend two administration power to gain a core here? Fine, I'll spend two administration power to gain a core there. I never cored there because it wasn't giving me overextension, because it's a colony. Hmm. Well, I don't really think that one maneuver, which is what that guy had, is gonna be enough. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those mercenaries hired for a little while, just, just a little while. I'd love to send a uh, colonist there, but I guess I could colonize here. That'd make a lot of sense. I could colonize there. I'm afraid of colonizing this place because I don't... I'm just going to do it. Screw it, I'm just going to do it. Because I don't have any, any way of getting uh, troops there, but... Because all my... Well, I would never have any ships on this side anyway. I guess I can build a bark here. This is a core, right? This is a core. Both are core. I'm gonna go ahead and build some barks here. Start making a fleet on this on this ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. Japan is going to have an Atlantic Ocean fleet. <laughs> hmm, I wonder why that one's gonna take so much longer. Probably revolt risk. Finally, some of these uh, more important cores are coming in. Going to help me with some of this massive overextension that I have. Oh my. I'm just going to go ahead and park... I'm just going to go ahead and park these cogs here. Well... I get a claim on this province. Now, I wanted this province anyway. I create spice. They're Hindu, so eventually I can convert them. This is a great event. I'm going to go ahead and press the issue. They'll gain dis diplomatic insult causes Belay on me, but if they declare war on me right now, that would be very surprising. They actually have, a, they actually have Bali inside them, so if you ever take over all of them... Um, all of this spread people. You can release Bali. Not that I necessarily would, but you can, so. Go ahead and send my missionary here. Wish I could pick up a few more, because there's going to be a period in which I am able to send many missionaries, or would be able to send many missionaries if I had many missionaries. Good. Hmm. This is that same nationalist sentiment, which is to say that the people standing there... ...are not J Japanese. So they get much higher revolt risk. For quite a while. Five years? It's not a year event. There's like... There's like three different durations of events in this game. Year, ten year, and five year. Oh, and permanent. Basically, permanent in this game 
is till 1871, which is the day that Victoria, the game also by Paradox, picks up. Just like this game picks up at the end of Crusader Kings. And I, I, I believe Hearts of Iron picks up at the end of Victoria, but I'm not sure about that last one. I never played Hearts of Iron. I, uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of war. And that one was... Okay, I, I need to find who's making me Chinaware. This little province here is making me Chinaware. That means that these provinces here and up into here are capable of Chinaware. See, I, I was getting effects of trade in Chinaware, and I think if I got like one or two more Chinaware producing provinces, that increases the likelihood that I'm going to trade here, because increase of legitimacy doesn't sound that big, but anything not gold at this point, any of these resources, whether they be monarch points, prestige, legitimacy, anything at this point that's not gold, is actually kind of important to me. Which reminds me, I should check to see if... Yeah, there's a better visor here. Okay, Spain. Will you give me fleet basing yet? Nope. Still no. That's fine. Eventually, maybe you will. Because I'd love to colonize this location and be able to westernize. Suriname, I think that's how it's pronounced. Yep, see now we're trading in Chinaware simply because of that colony. It's we're, we're just on the cusp. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get California. It really hasn't been a priority. Although... It's a good question. Why hasn't it been a priority? I guess I just don't have the troops. I don't feel- I didn't feel like I had the troops to colonize California, or really any incentive to colonize California, but... I'm gonna send a conquistador down over here to explore these provinces. So that I can, I can not only gain some prestige from revealing these fog of war, but also ill news, conquistador, that guy. Is that the one I just purchased? Nope, that was must have been this this conquistador. That's fine. I I didn't really need uh, that conquistador. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't read that event. It was just the legitimacy reduction event. It's just a random event that pops up. The more unstable your the more unstable your realm is, the more likely you are to get these just sort of like always negative. Hmm, peasants and the crows. Well, you can walk to the crows, believe it or not. And that's exactly what this mercenary band is gonna do. Oh wow, check it out! Korea's reborn! Of course, they're at war with Ming, so odds are good that they're about to get eaten back up again, but... Korea almost got back all of its provinces after years of being under Ming control. And this... this... Huh. Twenty-seven troops. What do you guys think the odds are that I can beat these Aztec nationalist rebels? Let's let's check terrain here for a second. What is it? It's a, it's a desert mountain. That's very defensive terrain there they've got. Well... I 
I have two options, really. I can run these troops down here. I can run these troops down here and combine them before I before I combat them. Benefit of that being that I'm just going to be overall stronger. They also seem to be suffering some sort of attrition. So they might die over time. However, if they are able to siege through this province, I'll lose any process any progress I've made in pouring. I think what I'm gonna do is go fight the these these rebels while simultaneously walking my other troops over here to merge. Hoping that these guys take some attrition. And that when I merge up, remember I sent a colonist over here, so I don't want this colonist to, to, to lose the potential of colonizing here because it took him a year to get there, so like the cost isn't so much the money or anything like that, it's the year that it took for the colonist to get there. Overseas income. Hmm. I don't really know what my overseas income is at this point. I suppose it's probably best in the tariffs. So are they losing any? Was it 24 to start with? Well, it looks like they are losing some. Just slowly. I am going to wait to merge them. I actually don't think I'll win this combat. They breached the walls and they're sieging. Never mind. No! Gosh, that's bad. They... I, now I lost my coring progress there. What I'm actually going to do is sell this pro province to these guys. I'm going to go ahead and call this... No, they still won't give me fleet basic rights. I'm going to sell this province um, to the Zapotec. It is a gold mine, but it's going to have massive revolt risk. I'm not going to be able to core it for a long time. Will they buy it now? Oh, no, I can't check. Okay. Well, at least they lost some of their strength in sieging like that. Now I'll definitely be able to beat them. That is disappointing, but not much I can do about it. I I, I just I, I don't think I was gonna win that combat. I don't yeah, I definitely wasn't gonna win that combat. It's close as it is. 16 versus the lower number that they have. Oh, the Zapotecs are gonna come and gonna come and siege through that for me. That's that's sweet of them. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm glad that I... Where are some of my fleets? So there's that fleet. Here's a... <coughs> oh, excuse me. But here's the fleet I was looking for. This fleet's gonna come over here and pick up this mer these mercenaries. I'm gonna go ahead and walk these guys into this zone so that I don't have to go another sea zone. I talked about it earlier, maybe in the second video. But the balance of speed um, between foot troops and boats in this game is such that compared to Crusader Kings 2 or even previous Paradox games, the speed of boats is slower compared to the speed of foot troops. So. Normally, or in Crusader Kings 2, it wouldn't have been worth it to walk your foot troops anywhere because the boats were just going to move that much faster. So here's a great example. 
Here's a wonderful example of the difference in play between early and mid game. I'm sure it'll even more strongly solidify into the late game. I would have chosen this event in the early game without, without question. And I think I mentioned that. However, uh, I would have cho chosen this option to this event in the early game. However, now I actually value legitimacy because it, it affects the revolt risk. I don't want to lose 10 legitimacy because I don't want to increase the revolt risk. It's just that important. Now, that being said, I'm going to take the administrative power because that's half a stability. And a stability is going to make a bigger difference than 10 legitimacy. I'm just saying that it was much more thought. Um, potentially, if there were a later game scenario in which I had full um, stability, I, I, I might choose the other event and I would never have chosen. But yeah, in this case, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to use that to boost. Oh, I thought it was going to cost me a hundred. I didn't even read it. Because it normally costs a hundred. But it... Half of the overextension is a factor in that. <laughs> well, maybe I would have gone the other direction, believe it or not. I... feel a little bit silly. I definitely thought I had that all figured, and then I didn't even take the time to read the stability cost. It is affected by your overextension. Overextension is so painful. Boy. Well, now that I know that it's going to cost me a lot more than 100 administrative power, I'm going to go ahead and lose the diplomatic power. Especially because I'm just trying to save up for this tech. I'm never going to get there at this rate. Not with all the coring costs and other events that have been costing a lot. But changing someone's culture seems to cost diplomatic power. So I'm probably going to go through and if it only costs 10 diplomatic power, same religion overseas is reducing it by 80%. I'm definitely going to go in and... That'll, re that'll remove any of this nationalist revolt risk because they won't be... Um, any of, any of, any of the uh, potential of getting nationalist result, the rebel sentiment or anything like that in the future because they'll just be Japanese Shinto living here in America. They, they won't. They won't think of themselves as as being different than that. So I'm gonna split back off the seven that walked across the the Texas desert and whatnot before. How's my Spanish uh, diplomat doing? Still hasn't gotten me fleet basing rights. Is there an advisor that would increase? No. Sometimes there's an advisor that increases the, um, what? Are you kidding me? This event just keeps popping up over and over again. I really need to get, I really need to get this overextension under control. I'm pretty sure that's spawning from overextension. Well, I might as well go and Actually, that's a desert mountain, also for attrition if I go sit there with them. So I'm, I'm not. It doesn't really speed it that, up that much. If at all. Yep. More massive revolt risk. See why I was really advocating a peaceful expansion before. I, I think I just carried on one too many wars in close succession. So this is the Amazonian wasteland, you can't walk through there. I'll just send him to walk through here. I'm gonna try to pick up Cayenne. Leads a personal union in a coalition against France. 
allied with Great Britain and Portugal. Boy, is France just screwed. Well, on that note, <laughs> I don't know how France's, is, how France's power is on the mainland. I'm just saying that as soon as this spot is filled by the French or France or Portugal, Spain, uh, by either French or Spain, Spain and France will get colonial co um, war causes belly on each other, and I'm sure that's going to spark a, like a world war, but it looks like France is going to get the, bread, um, the butt end of that. Well, that's about 30 minutes. I'm going to take a little, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the video there, and I'll be right back in just a second.